Well, like yourself, I live in Australia. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a sports and exercise medicine physician. So uh, my background in terms of medicine, uh, I started sort of, you know, conventionally medical practice. And then very early on in the piece, I actually discovered low carbohydrate diets. And uh, I discovered the science in a an editorial in the British Medical Journal. And at the time I was suffering metabolic syndrome, uh, which as you know, is defined by five features. And, you know, in particular, I had incredibly high blood pressure and I had very high triglycerides and my HDL level wasn't up to speed. And you only need three of the five criteria. I wasn't obese. I didn't have a abdominal adiposity. And as far as I know, I didn't have fasting, elevated fasting glucose, but I never tested that. But I certainly met the diagnostic criteria for having metabolic syndrome. And when I came across this editorial, I thought, oh, like, <laughs> good grief, this can't be true. I mean, this totally contradicts everything that I learned in medical school. And I learned it in medical school, so it must be true. But the problem was, it was actually authored by two doctors and scientists whom I respect greatly. So Professor Timothy Noakes and Professor Peter Bruckner. And uh, I consider both of them friends now, um, which is, uh, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for that. But I sort of said, well, these guys aren't loonies. They're sort of doyens of sports medicine. And, you know, within our field, we, we understand it. it's not coming from a very good evidence base. So these guys have actually introduced a, a modicum of science to the whole process. So I went and had a look at the references and I thought, oh, <laughs> this might there might be something there so I sort of embarked upon a, a personal journey with quite frankly fantastic results and over time and I think like with many people and this is over more than 10 years that initial low carbohydrate diet has morphed into various versions of ketogenic diets paleolithic diets and then tending towards uh, you know basically a, a largely plant-free diet toward tending towards carnivore diet so it's been an interesting journey honestly i can't remember but probably for at least four years five years i've had very little vegetable matter and it wasn't a conscious decision it was almost hedonistic desires when i say that it's like i, I only wanted to eat things that I enjoyed eating and two that didn't make me feel bad afterwards and as it turned out uh, I realized that you know when I would consume lots of collie rice and all of these low carb staples um it would you know it didn't agree with me it didn't sit well at yeah. least it didn't agree with my gastrointestinal tract so I sort of ended up steering away from that and you know every so often my wife would make a comment about oh you haven't eaten any veggies and it's like well oh, yeah I know <laughs> Thanks for putting it out. And even back then, I, I didn't really have any concerns about nutrient deficiencies because I knew enough about nutrition. I, I'd done enough reading to know that all the essential nutrients that we actually needed were able to be provided by my diet at the time. So in, a, in essence, I sort of stumbled on carnivore through hedonism. The list is too long. So number one, saturated fat won't kill you. Saturated fat uh, doesn't increase LDL. LDL, for all intents and purposes, if it's undamaged, isn't inherently harmful. If you restrict salt intake the way the government or the advisory panels advise us to, then you could actually increase your chance of dying. Fibre is not an essential nutrient. In actual fact, it's an anti-nutrient. It's the opposite of a nutrient. The fact that it's not digested by definition means consuming fibre is akin to a malabsorption, maldigestion disorder. Uh, it just goes on and on. Seed oils, which have been promoted, polyunsaturated oils that have been promoted are healthy, uh, you know, are not necessarily so. It's not the fact that the seed oils are bad, the omega-6s are bad, but there's certain chemicals and constituents and oxidative properties within seed oils uh, that are bad. 